I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've really just been waiting for the right piece to make it worthwhile. But what I wanna do is kind of a little series where I go start to finish through the entire process of building a piece and kind of break it up into sections so I can kind of dive into some of the nuance with the process. I'm not sure exactly how many parts it's gonna be, but I do know that this is part one. And I wanna go into my new and improved design process that still utilizes paper and pencil, but now also uses fancy technology like 3D modeling with Fusion 360. But really quick, before we get going, I'll just mention it right now and then give a little more detail at the end of the video but I need to make more space in my office showroom area. Let me show you. It's, it's too crowded in here, there's, there's too much furniture. So I'm going to put a few of those pieces on my website at discounted prices, just to see if I can get them out of here. But more on that later, let's get to the good stuff. I've been wanting to make a new large piece for a while, and I've really been wanting to make a new credenza. So like I've mentioned before, even though I'll eventually be designing this with Fusion, I always like to start with a hand drawing. It's just easier for me to get those initial ideas out on paper, and I like to do drawings. My name is Simon. I like to do drawings. <laughs> So for this piece, I decided to take my little record player cabinet that I made a while ago last year and kind of expand on that. So now that I had my drawing, I could then go to the computer to start the rendering. Now as a very novice Fusion 360 user, I can't impart a ton of tips and tricks. And by all means, if you see me doing something totally wrong or have better methods, definitely let me know in the comments. But I do think it can be beneficial for someone that has maybe been hesitant to try 3D modeling, to see someone that can make use of the program with pretty limited knowledge. If I can figure this stuff out, anyone can. You just have to go for it. Make your dreams come true! Okay, here we go. So I have a new project open and ready to go. And the first thing I usually like to worry about is organization. I like to break up the piece into a few different components depending on how big it is. And all this does for me is kind of keep everything organized in my head as well as on this little organizational area to the left. So I make my first component, which is the main cabinet. From there, I always start with a sketch. And from what I know, a sketch is just a two-dimensional drawing from which all the three-dimensional bodies are based on. And I do this by right-clicking on whatever plane I want to start that drawing on and select Create Sketch. And once I have that box drawn, I use the Extrude tool to then turn that two-dimensional shape into a three-dimensional shape. And now I have sketches and three-dimensional bodies all within my main cabinet component. So using that same technique, I begin building all of the panels for my main cabinet. Now that I have the panels for my main cabinet finished, I like to do some of the joinery. And in this case, I'm just doing simple mitered corners. And there are a few ways to do this, but the way that I like to is with the chamfer tool. So once I select the chamfer tool, all I have to do is then select the edge and set the distance. And in this case, it'll be equal to the thickness of the panel, and that'll give me a perfect 45 degree miter. Wow. 
So with the main cabinet pretty much done, I'll now add a second component for the inner cabinet. And now that I have multiple components, it's important to be sure that I've selected the component in which I want to be making changes or adding anything. And as long as I'm careful about that, I just keep doing the same thing that I've been doing and keep making the panels that I need. So once I have the panel where I want it, I can then use the combine tool to cut the joinery, and in this case it's dados. So I wanna cut dados into the side panels to accept that main top panel. So I use the combine tool, select the side panels as my target body, that main top panel as my tool body, and then select cut and be sure that keep tools is selected. Click OK, and now I have my dados cut into the side panels. And once again, I just keep using these pretty basic techniques until I have the main structure of the piece. Once I'm here though, I'll kind of take a step back, look at everything, look at all the proportions, and see if I need to make any tweaks to get it looking right before I move on to some more of the details. So now I wanna add the drawer fronts. And I want these to have a big curve that goes from the top of the cabinet to the bottom across two drawers. So what I did here was first create a new component, then created a single body that covered both the drawers and was at the desired thickness. And from there, I created a sketch on one end of the actual body, and this is where I drew my curve. And once I had the curve sketched, I could then extrude that curved shape to create the single drawer front and delete the original body that that curved shape is replacing. Now that I have one single drawer front, I wanna split it into two. So to do this, I use an offset construction plane. and I set the offset halfway between the top of the cabinet and the bottom, and that'll get me right at the center of the drawer front. And from there, I use the split body tool and cut the body into two using the construction plane as the tool. So with those pretty basic techniques, I'm able to model this entire piece. I really use fusion as a way to see a very accurate representation of what I had in my head. At least it's more accurate than my drawing, for sure. And I also use it as a way to tell if there's any issues with joinery, and it gives me a better idea of how everything will kind of come together. And now the last part, which is kind of the equivalent of putting finish on a piece of wood, is adding textures and materials to the rendering. kind of just a little bonus but it does give me a chance to try out different materials and see what I like and what I don't like. Alright so there we go that is pretty much the extent of my knowledge of 3D modeling but it's just enough for me to get by Hopefully this has helped someone who's maybe been thinking about giving 3D modeling a try. And if you wanna learn a ton more, go check out Lars Christensen. I've talked about him before on my channel. He knows everything about Fusion, so that's the guy to watch. And as you can see behind me, I have already picked up the lumber for this build. I'll probably go into some of that stuff in the next video. And real quick before we go, if you've made it this far, check out the link to my website to see the pieces of furniture that I'm selling. And if you aren't in the market for a piece of furniture, send that link to someone you think might be. Otherwise, I will be up to my eyeballs in furniture, and that's bad for business. I 
I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. All right, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully you'll enjoy this whole little series that I'm putting together. Let me know what you think. Links to everything I've talked about are in the description. And of course, until next time, if you've taken the plunge into 3D modeling and you're feeling some regret, channel your inner Shia and just do it!